It's good to see all of our visitors this morning. And you may not share with us in our religious conviction, but you are always our honored and extinguished guest. I want you to realize that whenever you're in our vicinity or in our community, you're always welcome here uh, at the Newburgh Congregation. It's just good to be uh, around uh, God's people. If you have your copy of God's Word, I want you to go back with me to the book of 1 Samuel uh, chapter number 16. And I want to mention, too, that uh, Brother Wise uh, and his family, they are at Midwest Congregation, and we have other members that are at the Midwest Congregation this morning. Uh, so if we look a little empty, uh, then that perhaps is the reason why that we have, because we have uh, members over at the Midwest Congregation. In this text, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, uh, chapter 16 rather, and verse number 1 through verse number 13. I'm trying uh, to keep from reading those texts or rereading uh, those texts because uh, our brother Travis done an outstanding job in reading uh, this text uh, this morning. But in this text, there's a transition taking place. And the transition is that God is making a change in the kingdomship of Israel. And God is sending Samuel down to Bethlehem, to Jesse's house, to make this transition because God have chosen one of Jesse's son to be the next king over Israel. So in verse number one, it says, Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul? Sin, I have rejected him for reigning over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his son. Let me use the subject. What God has for you, it is for you. What God has for you, it is for you. No matter what you're going through in this life, just know that, just know this one thing, that what God has for you, it is for you. You may not have everything that you desire or need right now, but know and believe that what God has for you is for you. It doesn't matter if you're young or old, black or white, rich or poor, educated or not. Just know what God has for you, it is for you. It doesn't matter if you're single, married, divorced, or widow. What God has for you, it is still for you. And whatever God has for you, you don't have to lie to get it. You don't have to steal. You don't have to cheat. You don't have to politic. You don't have to deceive anyone to get it because whatever God has for you, it is for you. You don't have to argue or fight anyone to get it because what God has, stay with me, it is for you. Instead of you battling someone to get what God has for you, you need to pray and let the Lord fight your battle and bring it unto pass. You see, whatever God has for you may not come when you want it to come. It may not come today, next week, next month, or even this year. But just know and believe this one thing, that what God has for you, it is for you. It will come to you in God's own time if you permit God or allow God to work in your life. The psalmist said in Psalm the 37 chapter and verses number three through five, it says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. You see, when you trust in God, when you allow God to take care of your future, when you allow God to handle your business, the Bible teaches us that whatever God has for you is going to be just for you. 
Now, in these passages of Scripture, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, the Lord has sent Samuel uh, down to, to, to Bethlehem uh, to tell Jesse some things about the transition that's going to take place in the kingdom of Israel. And verse 1 again says, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. He told him to fill his home with oil and go, and I'm sending you to Jesus, the Bethlehemite house, for I provided myself a king among his son. And Samuel said to God, how can I go? Because if Saul hear it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I will come, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one that I name to you. You see, God is sending Samuel on a mission. Because God have already selected or chosen him a king. Now, Samuel was mourning for Saul. You see, you have to understand why Samuel will mourn for Saul. It was Samuel who anointed Saul as the first king of Israel. It was Samuel who went and told Saul that God wanted him to go down uh, to the Amalekites and destroy their whole nation. Isn't that right? So Samuel and Saul have some history together. But now God had revealed to Samuel that he's going to reject Saul and make somebody else king in Jesse's house. So Saul was mourning over God's decision. We see David receiving what God had for him. And that is the anointing to be the next king of Israel after Saul. King Saul had rejected, had been rejected by God to continue as king over Israel because of his willful disobedience to God. So God sent the prophet Samuel to Bethlehem to make a sacrifice unto him and to select and to anoint one of Jesse's sons to be the next king of Israel. Now, when you look at verse number six, in the same chapter, it says, so it was, when they came, they looked at Eliab and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him, for the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Now, the reason why David received the anointing to be the next king of Israel was because David's heart was right with God. And that's a good lesson to learn right here, to have your heart right with God. The Lord has to be the center and the head of your life. You have to be the one who trusts and obey God. You have to be the one who worship and serve God with all your heart and with all your sincerity. But David, stay with me, David almost missed out on the anointing to be the next king of Israel because of his father, Jesse. You see, when Samuel came, Jesse got all of his sons together. Am I right about it? When Jesse received word from the prophet Samuel, they was coming to Bethlehem to anoint one of his sons to be the next king of Israel. He took all of his seven sons to meet Samuel with hope that one of them would be chosen and anointed to be the next king of Israel. Jesse took all of his sons except one to meet Saul, or to meet Samuel. The one son that Jesse left behind was David. 
Now, when Samuel arrived in Bethlehem to meet Jesse and his son, Jesse had all of his seven sons to pass by Samuel, thinking that one of them would be anointed the next king of Israel. He had his first son, amen, Eliab, to pass by Samuel. And Samuel, listen, Samuel almost anointed Eliab, the first son he saw, because he looked handsome, he was tall, he looked muscular, he had broad shoulders, he had a clean haircut, he was dressed up in a sharp suit, he looked physically fit. Eliab looked like he had the potential to be a good king. But God spoke up and said to Samuel, he said no to Samuel, I have refused him. He said, look not on his countenance, nor on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. You see, God already knew the heart of David. But when God looked at Eliab's heart, God saw that his heart was not right. Uh, Y'all missing it. You, you see, Samuel was looking on his physical physique. He was looking at his alligator shoes. He was, uh, did you hear what I said? He was looking at a three-piece suit, but God said, I didn't choose him. I'm going to refuse him because I'm looking inside while you're looking on the outside. I'm looking at his heart. you looking at his shoes. And so he didn't choose him. And then Jesse had the second son, Abinadab to pass by Samuel, to be the anointed king of Israel. But God said, no, I have refused him as well. Jesse had all of his seven sons to pass to be anointed the next king of Israel. And each time they passed by, the Lord said, no. All of Jesse's sons look handsome. All of Jesse's sons looked clean cut. All of Jesse's sons was dressed sharp. And all of Jesse's sons looked physically fit. And all of them looked like they had the potential to be the next king of Israel. But as they all passed by, by Samuel to be anointed, the Lord told Samuel no. And the reason again he told them no was because their heart was not right with God. They were men who did not have the Lord, the center or the head or their life. They were men who did not worship or serve the Lord with all their heart. Even though they were with Samuel to make a sacrifice to the Lord, their heart was still not right with God. And I stopped by to tell us this morning, you can have everything going for you. You might be someone who have great talent. You might be someone who have good personality. You might ever be ever so fine and ever so pretty. You might be someone who's popular with the crowd. But if your heart is not right with God, did you hear what I said? If your heart is not right with God, everybody else may say yes, but God will say no. Because God is looking on the inside. So Samuel asked Jesse, does he have any other sons? And Jesse said, yes, I have one other son who is the youngest of all. And he is a shepherd boy. He is down there feeding the sheep. But in Jesse's eyesight, in Jesse's point of view, he was the least and the smallest in the family. And Jesse was telling Samuel that David was not worth looking at. He was not worth the time to be dealing with him. Plus, him being a shepherd boy, tending the sheep, he's going to smell bad. He's going to be smelling like sheep. He's not as handsome 
or physically fit like his brothers. The only thing he's good at is playing the harp and tending the sheep. But know and believe this one thing. No matter how bad people talk about you, no matter how bad they lie on you, no matter how bad people may ignore or overlook you, no matter how bad people ridicule you, just know and believe this one thing, that what God has for you, it is for you. And as we notice in the text, I'm going with this, as we notice in the text, what Samuel tells Jesse, when he tells him that he had one son left that he had not seen, he says, send and bring him. For we will not sit down until he come here. Now, now the lesson here that we can learn and the lesson is what God has for you. Don't always you don't always have to look for it. Y'all y'all missed it. The lesson is that what God has for you, you don't always have to go look for it. You don't have to politic for it. Am I right about it? You don't have to deceive somebody for it. Because if it's for you, God will give it to you. And so, what God has for you, it is for you. You don't have to search high and low for it. It will come to you. And when you think about it, David wasn't even looking to be anointed to be the next king of Israel. David was out in the field, out in the pasture. David was minding his own business, watching his sheep. And usually that is, that is when you get what God has for you. Y'all missed it. It's when you're minding your own business, you see. And when you mind your own business, you will find yourself blessed. When you take care of your own business, doing the things that God has called you to do and not worrying about what somebody else is doing, God will take care of you. Am I right about it? You, you see, David wasn't concerned and probably didn't even know that God was looking for the next king. He was out there taking care of his business. Am I right about it? And let me tell you, that ought to help us today in the church. Amen. Because whatever God have for you, it's going to be for you. And when God have something for you, nobody can take it away from you. And that's why every member all ought, ought to be about the business of the church. Be about the business of God. Because if God got something for you, then nobody here can stop God from blessing you. Amen. Amen. Or they can talk about you. Or they can talk about how no good you are, how broke you might be, what you're driving, and even what you're wearing. But let me tell you something. It will not nullify the blessings of God in your life. God know how to bless folk. Am I right about it? Amen. You're going to see it right here. When you take care of your business, God take care of his business. And did you hear what I said? When you're taking care of your business, God is taking care of his business. While David was tending the sheep, God had already selected David to be the king over Israel. And not only that, but Samuel said to Jesse, we are not going to sit down until David shows up. You see, there's something here. You see, there are some things that are already waiting for your arrival. Y'all missed it. You see, why are you out there looking for something? It may be already there. And God is just waiting on you to show up. And a lot of folk miss their blessing. You, you know how folk get in front of the church and, and, they, and they, they, they pour out the heart to God, tell them what they need and, and what they're going through. But well, God already got it for you. It's already here. You just got to show up and get it. 
the, the problem can I go and preach this morning? Let me tell you something. The problem is that so many of us, including us, we get up in front of the church and tell God what was wrong in our life and how to fix it, what we need rather to be fixed in our life. And we, we pour out our soul and our spirit and then we don't show up to get the blessing. Don't even come back. Spend five minutes with the microphone in your hand begging for blessing, asking for thanksgiving, and don't show up so God can bless you. If you ask for it in the church, show up, he'll bless you in the church. Just trying to preach to somebody. Amen. What God has planned for you, what God has for you cannot take place until God bring you there. And what, and what God has planned for you and what God has for you, nobody can take it from you. Nobody can steal it from you. Nobody can cheat you out of it. You may not be where God wants you to be right now, but just know God will hold and maintain what he has for you. God wasn't going to give up the kingdomship to David's brethren. God was waiting on David to show up. Isn't that right? You see, while David was out in the field tending the sheep, God was secretly preparing him to be the next king of Israel. And likewise, God is preparing you to receive what he has for you. And the scripture says that they sent for David and brought him before Samuel. And the scripture said that David was ruddy, meaning he had fair skin with bright eyes and good looking. And when David appeared before Samuel, the Lord said, arise and anoint him for this is the one. Isn't that right? Let me tell you something. God, when he looked us over, He's looking for one thing. Am I right about it? God is looking at our heart. Isn't that right? God is looking for the pure in heart. The Bible said David was a man after God's own heart. Am I right about it? Yes, David made a lot of mistakes, but David was repentant in every way toward God. Isn't that right? David's heart was right with God. And so God selected, God chose David over the seven brothers that he had because David's heart was right. And when Jesse thought that one of the other seven should have been the king of Israel, God said, I didn't choose either one of them. Am I right about it? I already got my man. You just got to go and get him and bring him to the place. That I am in there, right? I'm saying what God has for you is for you in there, right? Whatever God promised you, it is just for you. Nobody can stop God from giving you what belongs to you in there, right? That's why you got to go on and serve God in spite of your circumstances in there, right? Let me tell you something. You can have bills piled up higher than a mountain. But if God got something for you, you still going to get it. Am I right about it? If you're driving a Datsun 210, 1979, if God got something for you, it is still for you. Am I right about it? You may try to impede my progress with obstacles and barriers, but I got to tell you what God got for me, it is still for me. Am I right about it? Your obstacles and, and your, uh, uh, your, your obstacles and, and your burden that you place before me will not stop God from giving me what belongs to me. Am I right about it? And vice versa, he won't let me stop him from giving you what he promised to give you in that right. Somebody ought to say amen this morning. Amen. Because God is an awesome God. Isn't that right? God will bless you when folk will curse you. God still has the power and the ability to provide and fulfill his will in your life. And not only that, 
when God gives you what he has for you, he will anoint you and give you the Holy Spirit so you'll be able to handle what he has for you. He'll give you the understanding to handle what he has for you. He will give you the wisdom to handle what he has for you. He will give you the power to handle what he has for you. The question is, how do I receive the Holy Spirit of God? Well, the Bible said we turn to the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation. Repent and be baptized for the remission of your sin. God will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Am I right about it? And when God gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit, you need to walk by the Spirit. You need to live by the Spirit. You need to be filled with the Spirit. You need to be led by the Spirit. You need to be strengthened by the Spirit. You need to worship in the Spirit. You need to love in the Spirit, to be led in the Spirit, and to be fervent in the Spirit. Am I right about it? Because that's the only way God with Spirit will remain within us. Am I right about it? I stopped to tell us that whatever God give, got for you, it is for you. Isn't that right? I know somewhere down the road God got something for me. Am I right about it? It's not for David, but it is for me. It's not for Fleming, but it is for Sister Briggs. Am I right about it? Whatever he got for you. It is always for you, and nobody can stop God from blessing you. And I hope you saw that in the lesson this morning. Am I right about it? You might be a sheep, and you may smell like a sheep, but God still has his eyes on you. Am I right about it? The old saying said, God, he watched over the sparrows, but he got his eyes on me. Am I right about it? And whatever he got for me, it's going to be mine. Whatever you got for you, it's going to be yours. Am I right about it? Amen when you can. That's what this thing, Christianity, is all about. Is that God has something for you. And what God has for you, it is for you. And nobody can keep God from blessing you. David became king over Israel. And you know, David didn't politic. He didn't have a political party. Out there publicized he running for king. Isn't that right? You remember I told you, David was out there doing business, taking care of his business. And when you take care of your business, like David was taking care of his business, God would take care of his business in our life. All, right. Amen. All you have to do is keep taking care of your business, serving God, worshiping, serving, amen, praying, attend service, keep a good fellowship, friendship among the family of God. Let your light shine, so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is, is in heaven. You see, when we do all of these things, God is secretly working, preparing us for that which is to come. Isn't that right? I'm thankful this morning that Jesus, amen, is already preparing something for us. Isn't that right? He said in John, uh, John uh, chapter, chapter, what chapter is that? Uh, 14, that in my Father's house, or many mansion. If it were not so, I would have told you. Isn't that right? I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I come again and receive you unto myself. Isn't that right? And I want you to look that word unto myself. God is talking to me as an individual. He's not talking in a collective sense. Am I right about it? You see, I can't piggyback on your back and you can't piggyback on my back to heaven. You see, God has a place for me that is prepared in that great city. Isn't that right? And I want you to know if I take care of my business down here, if I do what's right down here, God will take care of me when I get up there. 
am I right about it? But first, I got to take care of what's down here. Am I right about it? That's a song we sing down in Tennessee that you can talk all about me. Am I right about it? You can scandalize my name and you can do whatever you want to do, but I'm going home with Jesus just the same. Am I right about it? You see, when you know that your hand is in God's hand and you know you're walking with the Lord, folk is going to talk about you. Am I right about it? Folk is going to mistreat you. They're going to scandalize your name. They're going to treat you bad. They're going to dismiss you sometime. Am I right? But let me stop and close with this. Whatever God has for you, it is for you. Amen. And nobody, nobody can stop God from blessing you. That's my message. What's for you? What God has for you, it is for you. That will give you some hope this morning. To keep on keeping on in God's service. Because when God get ready to bless you, he's going to bless you. It may not be today, tomorrow, this week, this month, or this year. But if it's for you, God will give it to you. So what about you this morning? You see, a lot of folk get discouraged. You know, and we stop churching. We stop being faithful. And we stop doing the things that we know we should do. You know, I tease y'all. I ain't really teasing, but I am teasing. And I tell y'all about my Mercedes. Amen. Now I don't have the money. But if it's for me, guess what? If it's for me, I'm going to get it. And you remember what I said? If it's for me, I'm going to get it. And going to be some folk. Look at that, how can you afford it? Don't worry about it. That's between me and God. Because it's for me, and God's going to give it to me. If it's not for me, God won't give it to me. Ten years from now, I'll be riding that Lexus 300 ES. You know it wasn't for me. But I have enough faith and confidence in God that it's coming. It's coming. Y'all pray for me. It's coming. But even if he don't give me that one, and if he just give me any one, you know what? I'm going to be thankful. And I'm going to say that wasn't for me, but this was for me. Y'all get the picture? So it's always good to live in hope and trust God. If you're here this morning, maybe by chance or by choice you are not a member of the church, why not this morning? Make up in your mind that God got something for you. And what God has for you is just for you. And one thing that I know we have for you is salvation. And it's just for you. Amen. Oh, it's for me, but he especially is for you. I got my salvation. If you don't have yours, then God has one just for you. And he manifests that salvation, that love through his son, Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary Cross, that you and I might be saved. They hung him there and buried him in Joseph new tomb. But on the first day of the week, early Sunday morning, he rose from the dead claiming all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto him. And that power that Jesus proclaimed is given to us through his word, the gospel. The gospel is God's power unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, but also to the Greek. 
For therein, Paul said, is the righteousness, righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. So if you hear this morning, salvation is available. But it comes through the word of God. Your trust and your obedience in what God have commanded you. If you do that, God will bless you. God will save you right today. If you trust him enough to repent of your sins, to confess your faith in Christ to be God's son, and to be buried with him in baptism for the remission of sin, God will wash away your sin. God will add you to the church, give you the gift of the Holy Spirit, enroll your name in heaven. If you're faithful unto the end, he said, I give you a crown of life that faded not away. So if you're here this morning, why not this morning? What God has for you, it is for you. If you're here, you're a member of the church. And maybe you felt left out, overlooked, and unappreciated. God is still in the blessing business. And God knows how to bless you. Oh, he blesses all of us. But he still knows how to bless you. Because what God has for you, it is for you. Amen. And God will bless you if you allow him. Just take care of your business. Like God take care of his business with you. If you're here and you're subject to the invitation, we ask you to come right now as we stand and as we sing.